Hi everybody and welcome back to the 3X Fire Garage. On this episode, I know we got a lot going on, but I'm going to show you guys clear coat and the skid and show you guys the final product as far as the tunnel extension goes, but I don't really have much else going on, so stick around and I'll show you what I got going on this week. Like I was saying, things just didn't work out this week like I was hoping. The track and the drop brackets were supposed to be here today, but thanks to our lovely postal service, for some reason, they're not here. They don't know where they're at. They're taking their sweet-ass time getting here, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of annoying, actually. But uh, as far as that, that's where we're at on that. The skid, I do have back together. I'll show you guys that. I'll show you guys clear coating it. I went a little different route this time as far as clear coat goes. I was going to just buy a regular, like I said, PPG Speed Clear or Omni Speed Clear, whatever you want to call it, same thing. But I ended up finding this Rattle Can Clear Spray Max. It's a two part uh, clear coat, so it's got hardener in it. Yeah, I'll show you when I go to spray it. You take this little red cap out of the lid, jam it in the bottom. And that activates the hardener in it. And I'll show you guys that when I go spray this here. But uh, I don't know how I feel about it yet. I, I've been having some issues. I had a couple spots that I scratched while I was moving in around the, or the skid around the shop. And I don't know if it was just too cold in the shop or what. But I went to touch it up with the Duplicolor. And it started having some shrinkage issues. And I thought maybe if I warmed it up and sprayed it again, I could maybe get rid of some of that shrinkage issues, but I just didn't have the luck. So I just said, screw it. I'm tired of dicking around with it. I went ahead and sprayed it with the clear coat. And now I have some shrinkage issues with that. And I don't know why I had 70 degrees in the shop when I sprayed it. And it still did, but it turned out good enough for what it's going to be. I'm, like I said, I'm tired of messing with it. I'm ready for it to be done back together. So I can start getting the bushings machined up. And like I said, get the track, figure out where I got to put everything. And then I can start getting the chain case and whatnot lined up. But uh, with all that said, I guess I'll dive into showing you guys spraying some clear coat on this thing. As you can tell, I have the skid back together mostly. I still have to tighten a few things, but uh, I got it all pretty much back together. I still got to get the front shock in, but for the most part, at least it's all in one piece. Like I said, I had some cracking issues, and I'm sure in the gloss, you can kind of see it. I'm not real happy with it, but like I said, I'm tired of messing around with it. I mean, as far as rattle can goes, it looks better than it did before. But uh, it still ain't perfect. Give you guys a little walk around here. Like I said, I did the BDX two-wheel kit in the back on it. i still waiting to get the anti-stab for the front. That's pretty much all I have left to get for the skid. And it'll be pretty much done. I mean, I think it'll look decent once you get it in the 
sled. I don't think you'll be able to see any of the shrinkage that it's got. And like I said, I was so tired of dealing with this project as far as the paint goes. I just wanted to get it done and get it back together. All right, as you guys can tell, I got the tunnel extension finished up and mostly riveted. I'll go over a few little odds and ends. I know some people were asking about how I did it. I've seen some other people that have done it since I've posted this, and everybody has their own idea on it. When I was set out to do this, I didn't want an overlapping scene. Uh, it's just not, I don't know. I don't think it looks clean to each their own. If that's what you wanted to do, great. I just wanted to try to make it as factory as I could, minus I use large head rivets. <clears throat> like I said, I use the rivets from Ace Hardware. It's a snowmobile on them. They're a stainless steel rivet with a large head on them, 3 16 They've worked great. I use them for the oval sled, and they've worked awesome on that. So I figured if they worked on a sled that's going around a track, it should work on this project pretty easily. So that's what I used. I, I can show you. Here, give me a second. These are the rivets I used. They said they work better than other ones I've used in the past. I mean, you can use aviation rivets or cherry rivets. I think they're called or structural rivets. Those work pretty well. If you can get them to tighten up, sometimes the shank or whatever you want to call it won't tighten all the way and they'll actually back out and fall out. I've had that happen actually on that sled. I had it done a few times where I got kind of tired of it. That's why I went away, but these are what they look like. I know it's probably hard to tell, but they do have a little bit bigger of a head on them, which seems to keep the aluminum a little tighter. And I also, on these two seams here, I uh, used a, just a light dab of ultra black, or you could use ultra gray silicone on them just to keep the vibration from separating and keep it from rattling because that drives me nuts when you can hear the tunnel rivets rattling. That's, that's terrible. So that's what I did on this. But uh, I'll give you guys a close-up and show you the final product. Alrighty, here's a little close-up, a little more detail of what I did as far as the extension. This is what I was talking about. I wanted to have it so that way the seams all lined up. I don't have any overlap or anything like that. The seams are all butt flushed up. I wish maybe I could have maybe did something like this, but I thought about notching it and laying it down. But honestly, that little bit wasn't really worth my effort, I didn't think. As far as the inside, all I ended up doing was just using an old piece of tunnel to connect the seam here. And as you can tell, I mean, it ain't going to go anywhere there. I plan on running a just a bumper of some sort down here. And it'll be like a Snow Pro round bumper. Or I'll build a bumper I haven't quite figured out what my game plan is yet as far as the bumper goes but i think it'll be more than long enough and the other thing too is i didn't want to extend it back off the stop or stock tunnel here and have that big mailbox that hangs off the back way down here and up like the powder specials and earlier mountain cats i hated that that and i also didn't want to have like the tunnel or the track and suspension stop here and have this big old wheelie bar on the back of it so it might be a little shorter the tunnel wise versus the track and skid sticking out the back but that was kind of the end goal i still got to get the stickers and stuff peeled off so that way i can get it painted this here i'm going to do a little different than the skid i'm going to actually paint it with a decent paint i think and a decent clear coat out of the gun just so I don't have any of that shrinking issues or anything like that. This is a little more visible. You can see this, but that's pretty much the just of how I did it. Like I said, you're going to need two or two sleds to do this right. So you can cut pieces out of the other one. But if you get lucky, you can find one that was smashed in the front end. It's still got a good tail section for next to nothing and cut the parts out and it's more time consuming than anything. But overall, once I paint it black, you won't even be able to see the big rivet heads or anything like that is noticeable so i think that'll be pretty good when it's all said and done and that's all i really got for this episode it's gonna be kind of a quick episode like i said i know i had some people asking about how i did the tunnel extension want a little more information on that 
I want to show you guys the skid once it's all back together and whatnot. But just waiting on parts at this point. So I don't know exactly when I will do the next video. I got to get some more parts in here. I tried to go buy another part sled today, but like typical Facebook marketplace, nobody wants to respond back or drag their feet. So I don't know. We'll figure that out when it comes to that point. But uh, I want to thank all you guys that have already subscribed to the page. It's been great. The views are up. That's awesome. I got a lot of unsubscribed viewers that are checking out the videos. If you like this kind of information or this kind of video, how-to kind of videos, hit that like button or hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you guys know when I'm actually uploading new videos. It's usually a Saturday or a Sunday when I get to around uh, uploading new videos. So just stay in the loop, hit that notification button and hit the subscribe button. And thanks for everything, guys. Thanks for the comments and have a good weekend.